Make sure you follow me on social media to get updates and ask me questions. Enjoy the video! I am on PHP Storm and I want to create some products and display them with view. So first we need a model and a migration for the products. So on the terminal you can run php artisan make model product dash m. So this part here will create the model right here and this one will add the migration. We also need a controller so php artisan make controller products controller now I will open the migration, let me first close all these tabs. So the migration is this one, create products. And I will add a couple of fields here. So first of all, a product will have a name, a price and a description. So for the name we can keep this as a string. The price, it can be double price. And we also have the description, which will be a text in, the, in our case. So, description here. Okay, so let's now migrate, PHP Artisan migrate. And let's go back to this and take a look. Okay, perfect. We have this table here with the products. Of course, now we need some dummy data so we can start displaying products in our view application. For this, we can use a model factory. So, open a model factory. And I will just copy this code here so I do not repeat this from the beginning. And I will change this one to product. We do not need a password, of course. We will keep the name. We have price and description. Description. Okay, let me also get rid of the remember token. And let's start working here. So the name will be a word. The price. The price will be a random float. So random float with two decimal points and then we the minimum price 1 and the maximum price 100. For the description, very simple, we can create a paragraph with a random number of uh, sentences, so from 1 to 10 sentences. Now in the database seeder, we will call this model factory and create, let's say, 50 products. So I will say here product 50. In the terminal, PHP Artisan, DB Seed, and let's take a look now, Browse, and as you can see, we have 50 products in total. And all of them, they have a random name, they have a random price, and a random description. Okay. The next step is to work with the resource controller, which we already have available, of course, if you remember, we have created this controller here for the products. But first, let me define a resource route for the controller. So in the API, below here, I will say route resource products, which will be our URI for all of them, and then we specify the controller, products controller. Now all we have to do inside the products controller is to define the index function, so public function index. And here we will return Product all. In in my case, uh, PHP Storm, whenever I use product like it, I did uh, in a couple of seconds ago, it will auto import the the class here. In your case, if you're using Sublime Text, then this will not happen. So you have to do it here on your own. So make sure you do not forget to import the product class right at the top. Now regarding this code here, this part product all, let me tell you something about this. Suppose you have 100 million products, okay, and not 50. This line here, product all, is something that you should avoid because this line will return all 100 million products. So you can imagine how slow the operation will be, right? Now we will have a different course on how to build an amazing API and fix a couple of problems that we will see during the, this course. But for now, for what we need at this moment, this line will work, but just for now. So if you go to the browser and you go to... Uh, I'm running Laravel on localhost 8000, so if I go to API products... Well, I'm not running Laravel, so let me run this, PHP Artisan Serve. Okay, back to this. As you can see, this will return all the products, 15 total. 
So let's make use of this URI here, the API products URI in Vue.js, in the Vue application. If you remember, we have this feed component, right? Well, let's write some JavaScript here. So I will open the script and then export default. And yeah. Now regarding data, we have products. Products will be an array, so let's include that. Data return return and then products and this will be an array as I said. Okay, now I will introduce you to the created hook. So the created hook is this one. Created and this is a function as well. So each view instance goes through a series of initialization steps when it is created. So while it goes through those steps, it will also invoke some lifecycle hooks. So this here is a lifecycle hook, the created hook. Now I want you to take a look at this diagram right here. So this is the lifecycle diagram for a view instance. As you see, we create a new view instance, and then this goes through the lifecycle hooks that I said. So one of them is the before create. We also have created, before mount, mounted, before update, updated, before destroy, and destroyed. So all these red bubbles are hooks that we can access in our application. So created, as I said, is one of them, but you can access each of these bubbles here, each of these hooks. So what do we want to do on this created hook? Well, we want to make an HTTP call and initialize our products here. Now this is very easy, right? Because we already know the code. This dot HTTP dot get and then HTTP colon dash dash local host. Are we going to do this again? Okay, let me tell you something. If we do this again, so if we repeat pretty much what we have done here again and again, personally, I, I don't like this, okay? I am certain that there is a much better way of doing this, right? So instead of doing something like this every single time, then what I want to do instead is this one, is to say API and then products, right? So this is what I want to do because this is our URI and we already know that. If you remember, which is what we have right here, API products. So in order to make possible this kind of option here, what we can do is to use the HTTP option instead, right? So inside the main.js, before the navigation word, so view.http and then options and then root. So the root of the application will be what? Well, it will be, in, our, in, in my case at least, because in your case I don't know, uh, what is your root of the application, but in my case, it is this one. So I will just take that and paste it here. Okay, so with this in place, let me now fix this a bit more, because if you have the dash at the front, then this will not make an HTTP call to the localhost 8000 that we specify here, but to 8080, which is the view application. So in order to avoid that, make sure you do not have a dash at the front of the, of the URI. Okay, so let's try to log in and see if this works. So I will go here and I will grab one of the emails and try to log in. We definitely have to add some redirections so we can go to the login with, uh, with a link here, but anyway, we can do that later. Okay, so this is the email and this is the password. Actually, let me open the console so we can see if this works or not. Let me do this again email and password. Okay, so I get a 401, which is uh, regarding the client. Uh, let me see, yeah, client authentication field. Uh, in that case, it means that uh, for some reason I have resetted my database, so I have to get the client. Yeah. So this is a secret. Let me copy the secret from here. And let me go right here. So is this the same? No, it is not. So this is why this was not working. So change this to the new one. Uh, so yeah, guys, whenever, because this is something that I did earlier. So whenever you run, for example, uh, PHP artisan migrate refresh, this will create all the tables in the database, right? But you will not have these auth clients here. So in order to have them, you have to run PHP artisan passport install. And this, let me actually run this. 
So this will populate the, the tables and one of them is the auth clients and of course again now this has two more clients here. But anyway, I do not need these ones, I just need one of them. So if you do something like this, then make sure you always have this client secret here updated, otherwise this will not work. Okay, so let me try this once again, let me pretty much do what you might do in the future. So PHP artisan migrate refresh and then seed. So this will migrate the tables and it will seed them. Okay, and define index uh, create products table. Okay, in that case, well, let me completely delete the tables from here, drop all of them and migrate and seed again. Okay, perfect. So as you see, this will migrate and it will, it will also seed the tables. And what I want to do now is to, because right now, if you take a look, the clients is empty, right? Zero rows. So in order to fix this, PHP artisan, passport, install. And this will install uh, all the clients that you need and the, the access clients. Okay, so let me get the client from here, the secret, and again, update this. So never forget to update this. Whenever you get that 401 client uh, not authenticated, something like this, whenever you get that problem that we got earlier, then this is the case. So you have to update the client secret because it is not correct. Okay, let me get uh, one of the emails again, because now we have a new email here for the users. And try to log in. Clear the console. The password is secret, log in. So as you see now, this works. We get the access token, we get the refresh token, and the HTTP call, as you can see here, is localhost 8000. So yeah, this uh, root that we have here, inside the main.js, it works. Okay, so back on the browser, reload, and look at this. We get the products, right? Because this is what we're doing inside the feed. So when the view instance is created, then we want to make an HTTP call to API products and get the products. And this is what we get here, the products. However, this should not happen. What are we doing here? We simply send a GET request and we get the products. Now, same thing if we try this with the Laravel project, right? So if we go to this um, URI right here, reload, you can see that we get all the products. But this should not happen, again, I repeat, because we want all the resource routes that are inside the API here to be protected and only authenticated users can access them. So right now, everybody can access these products resource routing. So let's create a route group and apply the aft API middleware to that route group. The aft API middleware will make sure that the user is authenticated in order to access the API. Of course, in the view application, we are authenticated because we have available, let me show you. So inside the view application, we are authenticated, as I said, because we have available this token here. However, even if I delete this token, we will still have access to this API call. We cannot really show this because uh, we are redirected back to the login since we have the, the guard that does it for us. But if you had access to that feed, then the API call would go through and you would get the data. And you can actually verify this in this API here, in the Laravel project. Okay, so let me create the route group. Route group. The middleware, as I said, will be auth API. Okay. So I will get this route resource and put it inside here. So if we give this a try now, I am in the Laravel project, I reload and you can see that it redirects to the login page, which is good because now this route is protected and only authenticated users can have access to this URI. And if we also authenticate to the Laravel project, and try to access the, the URI. We get 401 again, however, this is a bit different because it is an error that says unauthenticated. So we are not authenticated and we cannot access this API. So everything you add inside this route group here will be protected and only authenticated users can have access to this. And this is the reason behind generating and saving tokens in our application. I hope that now this is clear.
So now the next step is to send the token along with the request in order to prove to the Laravel application that we are authenticated because remember we have this token right here and this is our proof that we are authenticated. Well, this is very easy actually. If you go to the main.js, you have another option, the headers. So let's do this, view.http.headers dot common and we want the authorization header this is what we want to populate and this will be equal to barrier space and then we concatenate the token so view.auth.get token all right so let me go back to this and to network and filter by xhr and reload this page. So this, as you can see, makes a GET request to products and this is our headers. Okay, it looks like we do not have the token here. Let me refresh again. Mm, maybe, yeah, we still have this error. Okay, so my problem was actually regarding this course here. Uh, I have the allowed methods only for POST. However, this should be with a star, so it allows all the methods. With this now, fixed and if we go back to the console you can see that we get no errors and if we go to the products and you open products and then headers you can see the authorization header here with the barrier and the token of course so if you do not include the header the authorization header with the token then all the routes inside the route group that we created cannot be accessed okay so now that this works let's quickly display the products right here in our feed so what I want to do is to go to feed.view and we will get the response and I will initialize the product to the body of this response because uh, the response, the body of the response, it has this data here. So let's take a look at this. If I go to the view, you can see that now our products data here, it has all the products so this is now populated and we can loop through each of these products so let me do it right here i will create a div first of all because if you do not create a div then it will complain that the component template should contain exactly one root element so in order to fix this you have to grab everything inside a div so this is what i will do here and then i will use a ul li and let's loop through each of these products so v4 product in products and I will output the name of the product and the price of the product product.price okay so let's take a look you can see that now in the feed we have all the products with name and price you can play with the styling if you want or you can wait for the next video when we will make this more pretty and we will also do some refactoring. All of that in the next video.